What's going on everybody? Boris here at your College of Design Studio. There's two documents that I want to put out this week uh, that deal with accounting. So I'm putting together a quick video that is uh, doing an overview of them. And this one is uh, dealing with accounting, basically debits and credits. Uh, there's some data and I'm going to walk you through the worksheets. Everything's filled out. Um, remember the accounting equation, assets plus expenses equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And let me go over this table really quick. Uh, so we know exactly what debit and credit um, in this scenario means. Now, uh, when, we, when we think of debit and credit in a marketplace, you know, we think of debit cards, which is cash and credit cards, which is uh, you're basically borrowing money from the bank. Uh, and then you have to pay that money back at a future date. This is not the case here in accounting. Basically, we're talking about increases and decreases. And depending on what side of the accounting equation we're working on, uh, it differs. So, for example, assets, um, an asset increase, for example, an increase in cash is a debit. Uh, decrease in cash is a credit. For liabilities, it's the opposite. It's a credit for an increase in liabilities and a debit for a decrease in liabilities. Uh, income revenues, uh, again, that's uh, an increase for a credit and a debit for a decrease. Expenses, uh, debit for an increase, credit for a decrease. Equity capital, for example, owner's equity, it's a credit for an increase and a debit for a decrease. And you can see a pattern, basically assets and expenses on the left side of the accounting equation. Uh, assets here, it's debits for increases and the same thing for expenses. Anything on the right side of the accounting equation, liabilities, owner's equity, uh, have a credit for an increase. So here, uh, we apply that principle uh, in this scenario. We are dealing with the hypothetical city of city town in the year 2013 and here we have just some some random numbers cash eighty seven thousand dollars debit so that means that we have an increase in assets or an increase in cash of eighty seven thousand dollars and here's the things that this document accomplishes the first one is uh, journalize the appropriate closing entries Second is determining the total beginning and ending unreserved fund balances. The third is preparing a balance sheet as of December 31st, 2013. <laughs> now, we're not quite there yet in this year, but this is just a hypothetical scenario. Fourth thing uh, this document does is it prepares a statement of revenue, expenditure, and changes in uh, funds. Fifth one, um, it creates a balance for the accounting period that ends in December 31st, 2013. And you can see here the different numbers. I'm not going to go through them in, in great detail. Uh, but just notice these two numbers, one highlighted in green, the other in blue. We have reserve uh, for advance to enterprise fund and reserve for encumbrances. So basically, encumbrances, you can think of them as expenditures at a future date. You know, we're, we're encumbered with an with a obligation, uh, so we owe money to someone at a future date. Let's take a look at the second worksheet here, closing entries. We have appropriations uh, and then unreserved firm balances as a debit and then estimated revenues, um, $7,655,000. Let's see where these numbers come from. Okay, so let's remember these numbers, uh, $7,532,000 and then $123,000 unreserved firm balances, C1. Let's go back to the data. And we'll look at that. It was 753,000 or 7,053,000 ,000. right here. Estimated um, appropriations 753,000, um, 7,532,000. Let's go back to that sheet. And then we have $123,000 unreserved fund balance. Where does that come from? This number comes from the difference between estimated revenues and appropriations. Uh, observe here that estimated revenues, basically the money we receive in the business or in the city, uh, is seven million six hundred and fifty-five thousand. We only appropriate, however, seven million five hundred and thirty-two thousand of our estimated revenues, so we're left over with one hundred and twenty-three thousand. And these are our closing entries at the end of the year. We've received an X amount of money, and we've used up or dispersed and appropriated. Uh, or Z amount of money, which is less than 
uh, the amount we received. So we have to account for that money and we say unreserved firm balance of $123,000. Now let's go through this section quickly. Uh, these numbers again come from the data worksheet. And remember those two numbers that we observed, the 105,900 and 55,000. Let's go back to that and check them out real quick. We have reserve for advanced to enterprise fund and reserve for encumbrances. So basically, it's not encumbrances. It's not that we have expenses, but we're reserving $55,000 to deal with uh, expenses and encumbrances as they occur throughout the operating cycle of the city. So going back to the second sheet here for closing entries, um, we plug in all the numbers from our data tab. You know, we crunch the numbers. Our beginning balance is 192,000 right here. We carry it over again. Total beginning fund balance. Uh, so we're calculating the total beginning fund balance, which is the amount that's reserved for the enterprise fund plus um, the beginning balance at the beginning of the year. The ending balance is, you know, we close all the account, we, we close the operating account, the encumbrances, transfers, uh, and all that. We get $320,000. We add in our reservations for advances to enterprise fund. We add in our reservations for um, encumbrances and expenditures and we get this number here and we'll see those numbers uh, later on in this worksheet now let's go to the third tab uh, that's that's the number right here 481,000 uh, closing entry which is a total ending balance and total liabilities and fund equity is 807,000 uh, this number is a total fund balance which is what we expect and this is the balance sheet for the hypothetical city of city town Notice here, cash, we have $87,000 increase. Short-term investments, $55,000 increase. Right here, uh, line number seven, taxes receivable, current, less allowance for uncollectible uh, taxes. So for example, you know, uh, the government tries to collect taxes. Some people don't file taxes. Uh, we have to estimate, every year they have to estimate the percentage or the portion of um, people that are not going to file taxes. And then they have to estimate uh, how much revenue is going to be lost due to non-filing or different reasons. So for this city, the estimated uh, allowance for uncollectible taxes is $18,000. And we subtract that from uh, taxes receivable. Uh, businesses do that for bad debt. Say, for example, somebody purchases something uh, on a credit card. Um, that's a promise of payment for a future time. So the business makes that transaction. Say, for example, you're buying a washing machine for $2,000 and you buy it on a credit card, you can buy the washing machine at that time. Say for example, you get laid off or something, you know, an emergency happens and you don't have, you can't pay that bill on the credit card. Well, that company is not going to be getting that $2,000. And this happens the, depending on, on the rate of bad debt. It can be 1% or 4%. So businesses make an allowance for bad debt for, money that they're not going to be able to collect from accounts payable accounts payable or accounts that are payable to them from customers and clients uh, and again we, you can go through this in uh, through this in detail uh, this worksheet is available on our collegeofdesigns.com slash feed and i believe the document link is called accounts or accounting debits and credit example work file this last sheet here is the operating uh, fund balance, uh, 297,481. Let's go back to the second one. Right here, we check and confirm those numbers match. Total beginning fund balance, 297. Total ending fund balance, 481. We go to the last sheet. Fund balance is of January 1st. It says 2007. That, that shouldn't say that. It should say, uh, let's fix that, 2013. And fund balance as of December uh, 2013. So yeah, there you have it. This is the beginning fund balance, which matches, and this is the ending fund balance. Uh, revenues, now we're summing up basically all the different accounts into a uh, holistic representation. This is the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balances for the year, for the whole year of 2013. And we have our revenues minus expenditures, which basically equals profits, if this was a company or a for-profit company. And then other financing sources, transfer to debt services, transfer to internal services, um, net changes in fund balance, and so on and so forth. So this is the first document. Let me show you the second one. All right, this is the second document. It's uh, the Accounting General Ledger and Trial Balance Example Work Document. If you guys like to see a detailed tutorial on this, uh, let me know. Um, 
But for now, let me just explain how this document works. So notice here the numbers. Um, these are the items that are occurring. These are tr transactions that took uh, place during 2013. And this is for a hypothetical city of city town in the general fund. So let's just do the first one. This is uh, line 19, item number one. Encumbrances outstanding at the end of 2002 or 2012 were reestablished, uh, $37,000. So at the end of 2012, we have encum outstanding encumbrances, you know, expenses that we haven't paid, $37,000. Let's go to our journal tab. And right here, this is item number one. So basically the number you see here, uh, one, two, three, a, three B correspond to the numbers you see on a data tab. One, two, um, three, a, and three B, um, which I'm actually not seeing here. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, but then there's a, there's a quick, uh, explanation though. This is usually, I think something that's done in general ledgers, a quick explanation of what's happening. So reestablishing comparisons at the end of, um, 2013. Let me change that. There you go. All right, and again, uh, every number, let's take number, what's a good one? 10, 10A and 10B. Reserve for encumbrances. Um, we saw that in the last document. Reserve, uh, we reserve money for expenses, expenditures, and accounts payable. Uh, those are accounts, I think, yeah, accounts payable. Okay, so purchase order received and recognized. $1 million here for encumbrances and then a million six thousand. Let's go to the data, item 10. Uh, the materials and machinery ordered in number eight were received. Bills for 850,000 and 156,000 respectively were also received and recognized. So the sum of these two numbers, uh, 850 and 156, that's 1 million and 6,000 right here that we, that we have. In the third tab, we have our general ledger and our trial balance. Um, pretty long, these are all the accounts basically. Uh, cash, taxes are in there in order of liquidity. So cash, taxes receivable, um, current taxes receivable, taxes receivable, delinquent, you know, people who pay taxes late. Then we have our allowance for uncollectible taxes, interest and penalties received on taxes. Uh, and then uh, allowance for uncollectible accounts, accounts payable. Notice cash is very liquid. I mean, cash, you have it right now. Accounts payable uh, and accounts receivable. Uh, accounts receivable is basically money that's owed to you. You don't have that money. It's a promise of money on a future uh, date. So it's not as liquid as cash or as, you know, uh, fees that you're going, that you know you're going to get from um, delinquent taxpayers. Appropriations, encumbrances, expenditures. And then here we have our trial balance uh, for the city of city town for 2013. Um, everything numbered, cash, taxes receivable. And then here on these accounts, on all these accounts, Let's go up here, uh, five, cash receipts uh, received, 946,000 debit. And we know that that means that we have an increase. And then we carry that to our balance. So let's go to item number five in the data. Okay, collections were made as follows. Current taxes, 880,000. Delinquent taxes, interest and penalties, accounts receivable. And we sum all that up and we get 946,000. We go to our trial balance and we have $946,000 uh, for cash receipts recorded. And that's, that's the first item that occurs uh, in our cash account. Item number nine, cash disbursements made, 262,000. That's a credit because that's a decrease in cash. And you know, we're giving away uh, cash either for expenses or to different departments or for whatever reason, $262,000. Let's go to item number nine in the data uh, sheet here. Uh, payments were made as follows accounts payable payroll taxes uh, grand total $262,000 and voila we have it right here and then of course we subtract that number from the number we carried over previously 986,000 for um, a running total of 724 and this right here this balance uh, our balance that's what I mean is running total and every account is like that the number corresponds to the number in a data sheet. Both documents are available for free on our website or collegedesigns.com slash feed. If you have any questions or comments, let me know uh, in the comments below this video. And if you'd like to see a more detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on accounting, uh, general ledgers, how to create a trial balance or uh, a balance sheet, 
let me know uh, and I'll put one together for you. It's not a problem at all. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time on our College of Designs production.